Hi, after 16 months, we have returned with the long-awaited second edition of Meet the Athlete, and we have with us from Durfee High School, Owen Norton. Owen, thanks for coming aboard. Of course. Uh, a few months ago, I saw a copy of Owen's high school resume, and it kind of blew me away, and I, and I said, it's time for our next episode. Uh, Owen, I'm just going to give the people a sampling, and uh, you will forgive me if at some point during this interview, I refer to you as Patrick. Okay. Who is your dad, well known in the community, and it's in my head, so it happens all the time. All this stuff, is it true? Yes. It is absolute. <laughs> this can all be verified. Yeah. Yes, it can be. Oh, okay, I've been burned before. Owen, where do you find the time for all this stuff? Don't you watch any quality TV? Uh, no, that's actually <laughs> one thing that I really never do anymore. I never really watch TV anymore, unless it's like sports games. Student body president, that's, oh uh, no, student body treasurer. Yes. How much money you got in the bank? How much money are we talking about here? A lot. Yeah, can you give me a number? Uh, right now, in our student body account, we have about three thousand dollars. Holy smokes! Just not for bad. the student body, and each class has their own amount as well. And what will that be used for? Uh, uh, we actually have a dance coming up this Friday that some of that money is being used for. So yeah, you don't mind being audited here, do you? No. no. <laughs> and MIAA student advisor, where does that where does that take you? Uh, we're basically the representatives of the two hundred thirty thousand student athletes in Massachusetts. Do you get paid? No. Uh, here at Durfee, you founded something called the History Abroad Club. What is that all about? What does it do, and how did you invent it? Uh, yeah, so me and uh, my t one of my favorite teachers, uh, Mr. Costa, he, um, I had his class my sophomore year, and we always joked about going back to Europe because the Europe trip was always something that was really positive and a lot of people liked. But over the past couple of trips, some negative things happened, so they kind of canceled doing it. But um, me and him were discussing it, and we're like, oh, wow, that would be a really great thing if we could go back. So that's kind of how it got into motion. Mm -hmm. And he said there always needs to be a more educational part to it. You can't just send kids to Europe just for a week just to say that you're going to Europe. So we decided that it would be the History Abroad Club. Mm -hmm. So over the course of the year before the trip, uh, all 30 of us who were going on the trip had to write an essay about one of the places that we're going to visit and just something about that area. And it actually, you actually learned a lot from it, and we got to travel to Italy and Spain. And you just came from an awards ceremony for, uh, what was it called? That uh, was Fall River's Youth of the Year. Did you win? No, I didn't. But, but you were a nominee? Yes. All right. I'm curious. I assume at some point your name was announced? Yes. Because at work, we sometimes wonder, like if I were in the Major League All-Star game, and you know when they announce people before the game, when your name is announced, what do you do? You just give a little wave. Do you tip the? What did you do when they said and Owen Norton? Uh, they told us to actually stand up and say we were going to college next year. So that's what I did instead. All right. It so it would have been awkward if I would have had to do something like that. Yeah, <laughs> just like the little. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your favorite, hockey or the cross country? Hockey is definitely my favorite. I've played it since I was five years old. Uh, I believe you were Herald News All Star in cross, cross country. country. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Napier All Star two years. Uh, now I'm curious. What's your theory, hypothesis? Some sports at Durfee, very low numbers, especially stuff like uh, uh, cross country, uh, and even the hockey, the numbers, I bet, yep. are pretty low. Why do you think, what's going on? Why don't kids gravitate toward, like, a, cross country is a great sport. But I know on the hockey side of things, uh, it definitely has to do with the socioeconomics of Fall River. Mm -hmm. Hockey is a very expensive sport to play, especially oh, yeah. to start playing at a young age. Low, but cross country, uh, you have to be very motivated to really like cross country. Does it blow your mind a little bit, though, a school as big as Durfee, you know, there aren't like 20 kids who are yeah, it, it's, willing it's, to burn the lungs? I don't know. It's, it's, it's almost like saddening to see that, like, not even, not even a full team of kids will mm -hmm. come out and run for cross country. And it's, it's a fun sport. Like, yeah, you do have to run, but you end up enjoying running and you get really active from it. So, Tell us about this. I, this is my favorite award I think I saw on your list, the Xerox Xerox Award for Innovation. What'd you do to get that? Uh, you had to have copied something, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was actually um, for the Junior Book Awards last year. My mm -hmm. uh, aerospace engineering teacher nominated me for that, and I actually ended up winning that. And um, it was just for, um, I actually achieved like the highest score possible on the exam, on the end of year exam. It's run by Project Lead the Way, which mm -hmm. is a, a national organization for engineering and STEM fields for, um, that run through high school classes. So uh, yeah, and I just always had a passion for aerospace and that really kept it going as well. And that's what I hope to study in college too. I don't think I knew aerospace existed till I was in the, my mid 20s, so that's cool. How about this last summer, the US Naval Academy, and you've been accepted there, congratulations. Yes. That must have been Thank you. Yes. a stressful wait, huh? Yes, definitely. Uh, last summer you went to their summer seminar. What did that, why'd you go there and what did it involve? 
It's a program for rising seniors who want to go to the Naval Academy. Yeah, it was just a really fun week. We did everything that real midshipmen would do from waking up at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> and working out to going to classes. It was a, it was a really fun time. You, you know how to swim. You're a lifeguard, right? Yes. Yes, you know. I mean, who even know, knew they had aerospace engineering here at Durfee, right? Yeah, exactly. That's something, uh, even, even this year, the class only has about 10 kids in it. Last mm -hmm. year, it was, by the end of the year, some kids had dropped out. It was like six kids in the class, and it was awesome. Such an awesome class. We have a wind tunnel. We build rockets. It's awesome. Like, you really get to experience a lot of cool things. Who is the teacher? Mr. Lee. Oh, yeah? Air Force, too. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So people should try to get in that class, Definitely. right? People should use that class to its advantage. You have to be smart, right? Uh, yeah, pretty smart, I'd say. <laughs> is Durfee a good place to go to high school? Absolutely. Gigantic have, Durfee. Yes, I have preached this since I walked into these doors. I think Durfee has such a community feel to it, and even though it's such a big school, everyone really does love and support each other, and I've always thought about this. If I ever lived in Fall River when I had my own kids, I would never send them to private school. I would definitely send them to Durfee, because I really do, do think that public schools, and especially Durfee, really do teach you lifelong lessons about mm -hmm. so many more things than just reading out of a book and learning math and English and history. I think you you really take away a lot more than just book smarts from Durfee. Do you think there are any misconceptions out there about Durfee? I think Durfee is filled with misconceptions. I mean, just, in, just from me going on Facebook and seeing what mm -hmm. some people were saying when it came to the vote for the new school, some people just think the Durfee students are trashing this place, and it's, it's really not true. The, the sm it's such a small percentage of students that really don't want to be here to learn and succeed. Mm -hmm. It's such a small percent, but sadly, that small, tiny proportion is defining the whole to some people. Let's talk family. The name Norton, well known in Fall River. Your dad is Patrick. Yes. A hockey goaltender, I believe. Yes. If I remember. Uh, now he's the, what's his title at the Narrow Center uh, for the Performing Executive Arts? Executive Director. Uh, yeah, I mean, ever since I was little, I've always gone down there with him and helped out. Obviously, when I was younger, I didn't really have a role, but now um, I've kind of learned the basics of somehow using the soundboard and setting stuff up, and it, mm -hmm. it's really a great time always going down there. And right now, they have a bunch of renovations going on, so just going Good. down there and seeing the place transform to look even better, and it, it's incredible. Good. Definitely very proud of him for, he's set his mind to this, you know, 20 years ago, and he's mm -hmm. fulfilled his goals. So. That's really awesome. Not many people can say that they've fulfilled their goals like that. Um, the Blue Oyster Cult's coming soon. See, that's a pretty big yeah. deal. Yeah. Um, and then who else did they get? Um, the band that sings, uh, We're an American Band. They're coming We're soon. We're an American Band. Yeah, yeah, that band. They're coming soon. Yeah, so he's. Yeah. So, yeah, they're definitely bringing it, especially because this renovation has brought it from 280 seats to 400. Oh, they cool. They can bring in a lot more big acts that a lot of people know. And, of course, your grandfather. Yes. Tom Norton. Is there character. a more interesting character in Fall River? I don't think there is. <laughs> I mean, that man has done everything that you can possibly think of from serving in World War II with Elvis. Uh, really? I yeah. didn't know about that one. Yeah, Elvis actually bought the, uh, like the food truck on the base that they were stationed <laughs> at in Texas because he didn't like the food from the mess hall, so he bought the food truck so he could have his own food. Uh, he served in a tank battalion. Um, in Germany after World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a teacher, prison guard, state senator, Senate president, everything. And his stories, every time I see him, I hear a new story, and it blows my mind every single time. It's now, when you get out of the, uh, you're going to the Naval Academy, yes. you have opted to go right into the Marines, right? Yes, that's what I want to do as of now. Why? Uh, I've always wanted that kind of boots on the ground, like, because officers in the military often have a misconception that they're kind of like in the background and they don't really do much. Mm -hmm. So I think serving in the Marine Corps is a really great option for an officer because you really can be right on the side of enlisted men and really have a positive impact on their lives and their service time. I think I'd be too scared to do that, so congratulations. And by the way, as you may have guessed, he's going into uh, the Naval Academy for the aerospace engineering. Yes. And in layman's term, what does an aerospace engineer do or produce? There's two routes to aerospace. It's either aeronautical or astronautical. So aeronautical, you basically build planes. Mm -hmm. Astronautical, you build rockets that go into space. <laughs> uh, I think I'll stick to planes and fighter jets and stuff like that. All right, that should work out great. Owen, thank you very much. I think thank we did you. our 10-minute limit, too. Didn't yes. we? We squeezed it in. So thank you, and this will be on heraldnews.com, which you know if you're watching it, by the way.